So in this video, I'm going to show you how to add the Canon Hack Development Kit CHDK to your camera. First, to start off with a freshly formatted SD card. This will work on any PowerShot camera. So the first thing you got to download, and the only thing you got to download, is the Canon Hack Development Kit installation JavaScript, which uh, the programmer has made and placed on this website. And if it helps you out, definitely donate to him because he's put a lot of time into this. The author of it would appreciate that. So just go ahead and download the zip file. Extract that zip file to a folder. So just make a folder, extract that to it. So once you have it in that folder, just run the batch file, .bat. That will open up the program. And once you have that program opened up, it wants you to drag your photo in there. It's done formatting. Go ahead and take a picture. And once you turn off your camera, you can throw that in your computer. That picture contains your model number and firmware version. So this program will take that. And with that, it will determine what needs to be done. So just drag that picture over, drop it there. It'll analyze it. And then once it's done analyzing it, it should go ahead and work. Oh, you can't drag it off the SD card, so maybe copy it over to your hard drive, then drop it over. It'll analyze it. And it says you've got firmware 100i. So hit download. Once you hit download, it'll go to the next one. Scan for cards. It'll say it's your H drive. Make sure that's the card you want to go for because it's going to may delete some files, but probably shouldn't. So just go ahead and continue to install step. Oh, I forgot to make it readable. So go ahead, make it readable, put it in, and I'll tell you why I had it on lock later. So scan again for cards, continue to install step. It's not bootable, so it's going to turn it into a bootable drive, and hit install chdk. It's going to make it a bootable drive and copy all of the development kit files to it. It'll put on a bunch of scripts in a script folder, and you can later add scripts to that, but I'll show you how to do that after we go through this first install. So it's awaiting for completion. Just leave it alone. Don't unplug anything. So David Mitchell is the developer of this Java app, and he's done a really good job, I believe. So everything's worked for me. If it works for you, definitely donate to them. So you can safely eject your card and then before even even says here it's ejected, make sure you hit the lock button because when you lock this card the camera will try to boot off of it. If you don't lock it then it's going to use it as a normal card. So you can turn on and off the development kit quite easily just by enabling it like that or disabling it. So in the lock position, when you put it in, just boot up as normal. And it doesn't touch the firmware at all. All it does is boot up off the card every time. So it doesn't uh, harm your camera at all. To access the development kit, you hit this button up here. So it should be an S inside a square. And I'll try to focus on that. It should be an S inside a square beside the print. It's the shortcut button. So hit that. It loads up your... It says Alt on the bottom, and that gives you all your functions. Now you can hit Menu to go to the Advanced Features, or you can uh, just hit the Function button here to go into your Script menu. First, let's show you how to enable RAW Shooting Mode. So hit Menu, go to the third one down, RAW. It's hard to see. Let me focus. Okay, so. Go to RAW, and then just hit the function button to check that box. Now every time you shoot, hit the menu function to go back, 
you can turn off your your uh, script mode and then just now when you take a picture it'll save it in raw so it saves the file it's about 18 megabytes but it's exactly what the camera sees so you're gonna get barreling and you won't get a JPEG what this camera does is actually take the raw image process it de-barrels it because it distorts a little bit because the uh, camera lens has some distortion so it distorts it and saves it as a JPEG crops it a little bit as well so you're gonna see a pretty ugly picture because it's gonna have the barreling on the corners and it's distorted but if that's what you're going for then definitely save in raw but I don't really like that function so I'm gonna hit the shortcut button go back into raw turn it off and now I'll show you how to use script the script that's preloaded on there by David Mitchell actually is pretty good. So I'm going to load it up. It's under script, so it's already under scripts in the directory. There's also tests and exams and editors, but you won't want to use those. So he calls it interval.bas. BS files are just text files. You can go in there and edit the code. So let's load that script. All of the parameters of the script load up down here, and the title loads up there. So it's interval o meter. So every 15 seconds, it'll take a picture. And this function only works in certain modes. So in custom modes, sport mode, and movie mode, I found it to work. In auto mode, it doesn't really work. So let's go to sport mode, because that's pretty automatic. And as long as that interval meter is shown on the bottom, when you press and click, it'll start it up. Now, there's a bunch of other scripts online that you can download. and interval meter and that one works the best for me so I'm gonna go ahead and download that one see it keeps taking a picture I'm not just not waiting for it so you just hit shutter to interrupt it let's shut it down I'll put all the links to the information in the description so you can go ahead and download these things if you want this one's the ultra interval meter so you copy and paste this into a text file so you make a new text file, and you call it Ultra Interval. Actually, you can't use too many letters, so I just call it Ultra Int. And call it a BAS file. You can do that after you edit it, but I've got the BAS file as a text file already. Paste that in there. Right now it's set to N is 0, so it's unlimited and then the rest of it you can set on your camera so just save that close it copy it and put it onto the script file on your SD card or script folder on the SD card so it's an H drive chdk go to scripts paste it in here oh again I forgot to set it to read mode so make sure you keep setting it onto read mode and set it back or write mode and then set it back later. So now I write to the scripts folder, paste it in there. It shows up as ultra int. So you can eject that. You don't have to, I don't really do it all the time, but it'll cause errors. Make sure you put it on lock. Now we've got a really good time lapse script on there. The people that made this time lapse script did a really good job. So let's go run it. So there it is, click on that. Now you see there's a whole bunch of features under here, parameters under there. You can set it to shoot every five seconds. I like to do five seconds. And you can turn the display off between shots. So let's set that to seven seconds. Go back. And now when you got it in an appropriate mode and you hit click, now it's gonna shoot and just keep shooting until your battery runs out. So as you can see I got 64% battery left. Second shot, you can interrupt it again by clicking on that. So there's other cool things you can do under this. There's histogram, you can turn that on. So you can show it when you're shooting. So every time you hold your half shutter button, it shows the histogram and you can change the type of histogram and everything. Another funny feature it's got are these scripts he's loaded. So you go under tests, 
You can run draw test. Let's try that. So press any key to start. And we'll just start drawing some weird stuff on your screen. So there's a bunch of scripts, you can get anything you want. But there you go, that's how you turn the Canon SX40 into a fully featured camera. Hope that helps, and thanks for watching. Remember, description has all the links, so I'll put the stuff in there.